Hi everyone, it's Andrea here and today I'm going to give you a review of the book The Graces, which is by Laura Eve. I just love this cover. Look at it. It's gorgeous with the, the gold and this is rays and the little shells on it. And the shells are actually part of the story, but you need to read it for that. So, this book was one of the two books that was in August's Aluma Crates. I will link the unboxing video below if you want to go check that out. Now The Graces, it, it basically it says, everyone said The Graces were witches. I was going to make them mine. Just like everybody else in her small town, River is obsessed with the Graces. And just like everybody else, she's been seduced by their wealth, their exclusivity, their beauty and their glamour, perhaps even their magic. But unlike everybody else, River knows exactly what she's doing, doesn't she? Now, I've read some mixed reviews about this. Some people love it and some people hate it. The people that hate it compare it to a very poor imitation of Twilight. Now I've never read Twilight, I will admit that. I did see the first film, um, but I've never read the books. And yes, I can see where they're coming from in the sense that a new girl moves to town, she goes to the school, she meets um, a family who are supposed to be witches, and every, they're very popular, they're very exclusive, they're very rich, and people want to be their friends. So yes, it's very like Bella and Cullen in, um, in Twilight, that whole part of it. But it's totally different. Once you get away from that part, I do wonder if uh, the people who said that actually read the whole book. <coughs> Basically, River's not her real name, or River is her real name. Um, we're never told what her given name is. She decides that her name is actually River. That's the name she feels belongs to her. That's who she feels she is. And everybody at school calls her River without any question. They're happy to call her that. Um, and she does become friend with the three Grace children, Thalia and Fenrin, the two twins, the eldest, and Summer, who's her age and in her class at school. Now, River has moved to this town with her mum because they don't have a lot of money, her mum's a bit of a gambler, and her dad has mysteriously vanished into thin air and nobody knows where he is. And River, like most children, blames herself. So she wants to harness the graces and their magic to try and get her father back. But she's also pretty much a loner, which, and you find out why later in the book, but that's one of the big parts of the story, so I'm not gonna go there, because I don't want to spoil it if you do decide to read it. Um, so she goes to their party, she goes to the house, nobody ever goes to their house, nobody ever sleeps over until River. And they start casting various spells, because Thalia's got an ex-boyfriend named Marcus who's stalking her, and they try and stop him from stalking her by um, making a spell. She tries to make Fenrin love her by casting a love spell on her, and for a time these spells seem to work. Um, then we have a new character that comes in, his name's Wolf, and he's a friend of the Grace family. One night they're all out partying and drinking and dancing and have, basically having a good time in the summer holidays when the next day they all wake up and nobody can remember anything and Wolf is missing, presumed dead. Now Nobody can remember anything except for River, who's keeping that to herself because she wants to be like the Graces and if they can't remember anything, she shouldn't be able to. But her story is the key to the, to the mysterious disappearance of Wolf. The twist at the end of this book is phenomenal. I did not see it coming. I'm usually really good at predicting twists in tales and twists and endings in books. I can just say, oh, this is gonna happen and I'd pretty much be right with maybe a little bit here and there of difference. But with this one, I did not have a clue what was gonna happen. I was shocked as hell when the end came up. I'm still shocked. I finished this yesterday, because um, I was trying to clear everything for Diversathon, so I finished this on Sunday the 11th. And I'm still gobsmacked by the ending. I'm still, whoa. Um, I think this is going to stay with me for a long time. Now, apparently there will be a sequel to this in 2017, next year. So I'm really excited. I will definitely be pre-ordering that as soon as I see it uh, available for pre-order on Amazon or Book Depository or, or somewhere like that. I, I have to know what happens next. I need to know more. There's not many books that make me feel like that. I've actually rated this one five out of five stars on Goodreads. I don't, don't drop five stars very easily. It's usually a four star. But this one, I, I will probably read this again by the end, before the end of the year. I certainly will read it before I read the second book when it comes out. It's just phenomenal. <laughs> the, the twist at the end, it, I, I, I was like, whoa, I really did not see it coming. So from that point of view, it's a really good book. So, I mean, obviously check out the other reviews because like I said, it is very 
being very compared to um, Twilight but personally I really like this so I mean give it a try what have you got to lose I mean if, if nothing else you'll just learn another style of writing you, you know you might even love it so yes five out of five for that one so that's a review on this one I will be back in a few days with my diversifon either wrap up or a catch up if you like this video if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe comment and share and I'll see you all soon bye